This is Pastor Mike Philiber, Senior Pastor at Heritage Presbyterian Church, here on my back patio at the house, still in COVID recovery, though the days are ticking down. So what do you do during COVID recovery? I took this walking stick that I made and um, carved the image in it there. I'm thinking about doing some extra things to the stick. That's pretty cool, huh? Good things to do. <laughs> Want to say happy birthday to two folks, to James Jarden out in Georgia. James, happy birthday to you. I hope Leah and the rest of the family treat you really well. I'm going to pray for you in just a little bit. And Janet Stanzel, going to pray for you as well. Happy birthday, Janet. Hope it's the best day. And so uh, we are for morning prayer. We're just working our way through, first off, the Heidelberg Catechism. And we're at question 78 and 79. Do then the bread and wine become the real body and blood of Christ? No, but as the water in baptism is not changed into the blood of Christ, nor becomes the washing away of sins itself being only the divine token and assurance thereof, so also in the Lord's Supper the sacred bread does not become the body of Christ itself, though agreeably to the nature and usage of the sacraments it is called the body of Christ. Why then doth Christ call the bread his body and the cup his blood? or the New Testament in his blood, and St. Paul, the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. Christ speaks thus, not without great cause, namely, not only to teach us thereby that as, that as bread, let me turn the page here, that as bread and wine sustain this temporal life, so also his crucified body and shed blood are the true meat and drink of our souls into eternal life, but much more by this visible sign and pledge to assure us that we are as really partakers of his true body and blood through the working of the Holy Ghost as we receive by the mouth of the body those these holy tokens in remembrance of him, and that all his sufferings and obedience are as certainly our own as if we had suffered and done all in our own persons. That was question 78 and 79 of the Heidelberg Catechism. Well, this morning we are we're just working our way through Malachi. We are at Malachi chapter 2, 17 to chapter 3, verse 6. Listen again for the dialogue that goes back and forth between God and his detractors. You have wearied the Lord with your words, but you say, how have we wearied him? By saying, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them, or by asking, where is the God of justice? Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in the righteousness in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker and his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts, for I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. It's a very stiff word there in Malachi 2, 17 through 3, verse 6, but notice how it ends. The reason why we have hope even in the face of God's judgment, judgment is that God does not change, and therefore he is a God of grace as well as, as justice, and there, that's why his people are not consumed. What a great passage. Well, let's pray. Lord God, who does not change, a God of love and steadfast love and justice, and yet a God who wants us to do right, we pray that you would help us, Lord, that you would draw us close to you, that we would be near to you and seek you and be changed by you for good and for your glory and your honor. Lord, we pray for those who are having birthdays today, especially for James Jarden and for uh, Janet Stanzel. I pray, Lord, that this day would be a great day, a joyable day in the midst of all that's going on, that they would celebrate the gift of life that you have given them for another year, Lord. And I pray for this coming year for them, 
that uh, they would not lose heart, but they would grow in the realization that though their outer self is wasting away, their inner self is being renewed day by day. And for whatever light momentary afflictions they are going through, that those light afflictions are preparing for them an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Oh, Lord God, lift their hearts and strengthen them. Lord, we pray for um, those who are preparing for the ministry. I think of John Robert and others and would ask you, Lord, that you would guide and bless them through their studies and take care of their financial needs. We pray, Lord, for Reagan and Taylor and Weston, for Ben, for Jonathan and, um, and Daisy and for Alethea and Clement. Oh, Lord God, we pray that you would sustain and strengthen them, hold them up, uh, draw them close to you. We pray for health to prevail. We pray that you would provide for them in every possible way and govern their, their days. We pray, Lord God, for the doctors at, uh, who work with Compassion International in the Philippines, that you would give them wisdom as they seek to determine why blessings have been continually ill. Lord, give them insight and perspective and perception and help them, Lord, to know exactly what they need to do. We pray, Lord, for Captain Bill Lampkin of the 20, 231st Military Police and also a civilian hospital there in Prattville, Alabama. We ask you, Lord, that you would continue to bless him, strengthen and fortify him. Um, we're grateful, Lord, that he has conducted um, uh, various services that had small groups able to attend in the midst of COVID. We ask you to guide him as he um, does one-on-one -on -one counseling. Um, we pray, Lord, that you would use him mightily there, provide for him and his family and protect and bless him. And we pray for the promotion packet going through. Lord, um, we pray for the country of Ethiopia. Lord, just hearing more and more that's going on in Tigray, which is the northern part of the country, uh, up by Eritrea and Somalia on one side and Sudan on the other. We ask you, Lord God, that you would bring that which is fair and just there. We pray, Lord, for a decrease in conflict. We pray, Lord, that um, you would protect the uh, international care workers. Some of them have been killed recently. There have been others who are not part of the fight, who are simply just giving aid, and they have become victims. Lord, we pray for their safety and protection. Dear God, we pray that you would bring about that which is wholesome and right. Watch over your people in the region and preserve and protect them. Lord, we pray for those who um, that we know who are dealing with COVID, who are dealing with the symptoms, Lord, that you would grant them to be restful and at peace. We pray for a speedy recovery, and we pray that uh, this pandemic would be thrown out on its ear, both locally as well as statewide and nationally. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. Bless us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there we are. It's nice and cloudy out here instead of the sunshine blinding me in the eyes um, well, I'll be back. This is the end of morning prayer for this week. I'll be back next week on Monday. Uh, our church has had to close down all of our in-person services for the next couple of weeks, but we will be online 1045 Sunday morning, and I'll be preaching through John 20, uh, John uh, 13 verses 21 through 30 as we continue a series through John, and I'd love to have you join us then that Sunday at 1045 until our next time, the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.